Hey guys and welcome to Slash Rex Game. So before I start I just want to say that we're about to hit 10,000 subscribers and you know what that means, it's going to be another epic giveaway. I've got about 6 Game Maker bundles to give away, including 2 of which which will have many many modules as well as free games. So the sooner we hit 10,000 the sooner I can give those away. If you know anyone else that could benefit from these videos, please share my channel with them. And I'm really looking forward to doing this giveaway. Right, so today we're going to be looking at player cloning. It is a video that was suggested by one of the subscribers. It's actually a pretty easy concept to implement into any one of your current games. So if you've got some sort of game where there's a player that reacts to key presses and mouse clicks, then all you can do to clone him is basically create a second or third or fourth instance of that player in the game. But you want to have a bit more control. You want to activate and deactivate these players. Maybe they don't respawn when they fall off a cliff. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video. So in order to speed things up, I'm using my level select uh, tutorial, piggybacking off on that, which is going to have all our platform uh, mechanics and our parallax backgrounds and all kinds of fantastic stuff. So in, here, in the sprites, we have the player movement, we've got backgrounds, these are all the parallax backgrounds, we've got the scripts. If there's anything here that you want to know about, there's a whole lot of cool links in the description that can help you accomplish all these things at this point, as well as these project files straight in the description. So in objects, we've got our player, the object block and a, you know a couple of buttons and stuff for the menus we've got the rooms level select level one two and three and these are absolutely fantastic look at that okay to start this off let's go into our player now our player is technically going to be a clone when we press a key maybe the enter key it's going to create another version of the player another instance of this object but that instance of this object is going to be slightly different it's not going to have all the privileges let's say of the main player because every clone created is not exactly 100%. So in the create, to differentiate between this and a clone, I'm going to create some variables here called is clone. Set that to false. Is active. Set that to true. And basically, what I'm going to do is when this is active is false, I'm going to be preventing this detect key from happening. So wherever you have the key checks. Um, keyboard check or W or S or A or D or VK left right you can then wrap all that code around this is active and if it's false it means that it won't move so when we create a clone we can set is clone to true and is active to false okay but in order to do this because these guys down here all these little scripts they kind of rely if we open them up they rely on checking if certain keys are pressed let me see if I can find a good example here left check so here left key so if I wrap my is active around detect key. We've got a problem there because detect key actually initializes these key variables. So in order for me to wrap my is active around this guy without it breaking everything, I need to initialize those keys to undefined just so that nothing breaks. So below here, I'm going to be creating a script called scr initialize keys. So let's put that in here. Uh, put it right at the top. It's going to be the same as this. And I'm going to replace all of these guys with undefined. So that's sort of initialized but not given a value. So everything else will work and none of the other conditions will succeed. But nothing will break. Very good. Just like that. Okay, next step, now that we have that set, I can go to my step event and I can wrap detect key up in an is active. Now the instance of object player that is our player is always going to be active, so he's always going to you know, listen for that key. Whereas with the clones, we can click on them to deactivate them and therefore they will never run this code when they're inactive and they'll just stand there, which is what we want. All right, so now let's toggle this is active. Let's add a mouse left pressed. I'm going to say if is clone. Because um, if we click on our player, nothing should happen. He is in control. But if he's a clone, well then, is active is equal to not is active. So, you know, if it's true, it's false. If it's false, it's true. Basically toggling that guy on and off. Now, one might add, what is the difference between a clone and the player? Well, right now, nothing. If we create a clone, it's going to look exactly the same as a player. That's a bit of a problem. It's going to be a bit confusing to our user. So if you're creating a game that has clones, I suggest you 
give the clones something slightly different just so that you know they're clones unless you've got some sort of epic plot twist where it turns out you're playing as the clone the whole time and the, the real player is somewhere else maybe he's the big bad guy I don't know but in this case you can give the you know the clone different clothes or something in my case I'm gonna actually change his color slightly slightly actually majorly let's change him majorly let's say well if you are a clone then let's draw sprite um, the extended version and here we need to say sprite index image index xy image x scale image y scale let's make this bigger then I believe it's image angle rotation uh, the color hmm let's make color red green blue and I'm gonna go for let's put some I'm gonna go for perhaps like a blue I think a blue might look cool 72 164 255 and then the image alpha he's not a ghost so he's going to be 100% opaque just like our player otherwise you know if he's not a clone then I'm just gonna say draw self and he's gonna be that gray color that we've got as the default here in the sprites see this little gray color okay cool so if he's a clone he's going to be I think this is blue and he's gonna have exactly everything else as the player if he's the player He's going to be great. Cool. Okay, so now we've got some other events here. Let's see. Outside room. What happens if my player goes out room? Looks like he just goes back to the start. Hmm. Well, let's say if he's a clone, then he can go back to the start. No, actually, he can't. If he's a clone, he doesn't go back to the start. That needs to cut out into the else. If he's a clone, I'm going to say instance destroy. Clones don't get to stay and if he's not a clone there we go he gets to go back to the beginning very cool stuff all right so up to this point I haven't exactly showed you how to instantiate these clones how do we create clones well we need some sort of object here I'm gonna call this the cloning tool it's not gonna have a sprite doesn't really need a sprite I'm going to add an enter event. Let's see. Key press and enter. I'm going to say with instance create mouse x, mouse y. So the mouse point is going to be our magical cloning space. And see, we're just creating another instance of object player with a twist, though. With a bit of a twist over here. In here, we get to override these create variables is clone and is active in there so is clone is true and we're going to say they're not active when they're created they're like little robots that are waiting to be activated okay and let's go ahead and open up all our rooms where we want to try this out in and let's place our cloning tool somewhere in the room so that we can press enter. Okay. I just want to say that this tutorial is 150% compatible with GameX Studio 2. If you recreate these steps in there, you should get the same effect. Obviously, you'd have to build it onto something other than this video because I don't think I've built the parallax scrolling for GameX Studio 2 yet and the level select in my platform mechanics. Or maybe I have, I don't know. Check the description regularly and maybe something will pop up there with some Project Files for GameX Studio 2. Okay, saving this up. Okay, so in effect, the clone is just another version of the player with um, not as many privileges. So let's fire this up and see what happens. So here we are within our game, we can choose our level. Let's go for something happy and foresty, play. Okay, cool. So we're running around as usual. Nothing has changed. If I press the enter key, we make a blue guy. And if I press it again and again, every time I press it, we create a clone. But see, these clones don't react. They are not listening to anything. They are inactive. But if I click on one of them, let's click on this guy. All of a sudden, he follows my movements. And he's not really following my movements. He's actually just detecting the keys all of a sudden, unlike what he did when he was inactive. 
and if I click on each one of these, they all are active and following exactly what I do. How cool is that? Well, we can see if we can get them in sync. Very cool stuff, guys. So that's pretty much all it takes to create clones. Now we'll see if they Ooh, get this guy to fall down the hole. Come on, fall down. He's going to fall down. He's not going to be recreated. Eventually, they all die out from falling down the holes if we are unable to make them jump. And if we click them again, they can go back to being inactive just like that, waiting for our next instruction. So if you guys found this video educational and helpful, please feel free to comment, rate and subscribe. If you have any questions on this one or want to suggest further optimizations or even new tutorials, I look forward to reading your comments or you can just send me a PM. Uh, the project files are in the description. If you like this video as well as the other videos on my channel, please check out my Patreon campaign. I do appreciate your support. I'm really looking forward to 10,000 subs and also sharing with you guys some really awesome tools. So until next time, happy coding and I'll see you then.